Okay, so let's start by opening our Fluent Solver. So double click on Fluent, that should open your Fluent Solver and click Geometry, right click on Geometry and let's import our geometry. So I'm going to import aerofoil.stl. There's an actual solution of somebody, but I'm not going to tell which number it is. So the same process applies to every other airfoil as well that's been given in the coursework. Okay, so now when you right click, you can't open in design mode by default. So let's say edit geometry in space claim. You can do whatever you can do in space claim. You can also do in solid works, which you have already been taught in the course tools for engineers in your first year, right? So the same, uh, same principle applies to SOLIDWORKS as well. Of course, I, uh, you, you probably are an expert in SOLIDWORKS since you've already done a course on that. And uh, you should be able to pick up how to do this thing in SOLIDWORKS, right? But uh, we'll try to do the same thing in space claim, but if somebody is more uh, comfortable with SOLIDWORKS, you can do all of these in SOLIDWORKS as well. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds. My computer is a little slow for it to open. Uh, so we are waiting for it, the geometry to open in space claim. Okay, so it says starting space claim on the bottom left, you can see that it says starting space claim. So it's okay, yeah, so there's space claim now, okay. Now you can see that there's a whole bunch of triangulated surfaces. So what we will do is we'll just select. So this is the, how if you if you download any STL file, STL basically means it has like the surfaces are always triangulated. So it means they're made of triangles. You'll have the same issue if you open any file from your internet that's an STL file. So let's right click that and we'll we we'll select everything. Just do a box select everything. We right click and there's an option called convert to solid merge faces. So to start with, let us do this thing, convert to solid and merge these faces. And that's all for now with space claim. We'll come back to it later. For now, let's close it here, okay? So then we now, if you go back to your geometry and right click, you can see that now it's given you the option to edit geometry in design modeler. So since we have used design modeler in this course, we will try to do most of the things in design modeler. The rest of the small CAD manipulations, we will use space claim. These CAD manipulations can also be done in SOLIDWORKS, okay? So we don't have to necessarily do it in space claim. It can also be done in SOLIDWORKS. So yeah, so now it opens in design model. And uh, as earlier, let's first uh, start by giving it to generate. So this uh, it says generating feature, four of four import one. So you know, it's try, trying to import the geometry that we have already edited a little bit with space claim. Okay, so now we can see the geometry, it has no triangles and now we can work with it. I'm going to look at this, put it into the Z axis, click on the Z axis, so right, if you press on X, Y, you can see different views, but I would like to get the Z axis, right? So I'm going to click on the Z, so this is the view that I would like to have. Okay, so let me keep it this way for now. Doesn't matter how it is. So now I'm going to change the unit to millimeter so that things are easier to write. I don't have to write 0 0.001 and things like that. So you can see on the bottom right, it says the unit is millimeter, right? Okay, so now then first thing I want to do is I want to make this geometry quasi 3D. So I'm going to have a very small thickness. So I'm going to extrude it. And I'm going to create an extrusion. So geometry is this. So we can't select that because by default edge is selected here, right? So I'm going to change change it to the selection filter as faces and select this face. Right? I'm going to select the face and apply. So now it says for direction, I'm going to change from normal to symmetric in both direction. I'm going to give a depth of two millimeters. This still we have not defined our direction vector. So again, here I'm going to go, go to direction vector 
again select instead of edges here i want to select the faces see by default edge is selected i'm going to change that to the faces and if i select on the face now it shows me the extrude direction that it's going to extrude in both these directions okay and generate okay so now it's extruded me a airfoil but you can see that there are small faces that are there we will deal with this as we go ahead for now let's leave it as is okay so now let me go back and uh, do the things like i did in the like in the lab i want to select a rectangle and i'm going to draw a rectangle so on the xy axis so here modeling i've selected xy axis and in the sketching i've done the rectangle here so you can see the rectangle is drawn in the xy axis we've already done this thing in the lab and i'm going to add some dimensions to this so these dimensions i'm just adding ad hocly so your dimensions could be different you don't have to necessarily take the same dimensions this is just some and i'm not even saying that there's the correct dimensions to take in there so you need to be you need to think about what should be your dimension for your airfoil right so you know the uh, airfoil length, you know the cord length and various airfoil parameters. So based on that, you need to decide what these dimensions should be. So some something went wrong here. I'm going to just move this thing here. And bring it down. Okay. So now, so I'm going to just change my dimensions. I'm going to give 50. 50. Two hundred, three hundred. I think I'm using the same value we used in the lab. This need not necessarily be correct. Like I said, you need to think about what is the best thing for your geometry, and you need to do it based on that. So I'm going to just move these dimensions to a nice place so I can see them and they don't come around in the middle of my geometry. Right? Okay, okay. So now I've done that. I'm going to go back and, like we did last time, I'm going to extrude. This time again, extrude. I'm going to select my geometry as the rectangle. Apply so rectangle is selected, and I'm going to add, instead of add material, we'll add, add frozen and direction. We'll say again symmetric in both direction. We have done it by two meters, so then I'm going to give it to generate. Right. So now it generated me the 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 bounding box where I have to mesh, but we are left out with one operation yet. That if you remember, we did a Boolean operation. We did a rotation. I leave the rotation to you. You can do the rotation. We need to do the Boolean operation, right? So I'm going to leave, do the Boolean operation here. Subtract target body, right? And tool body. Okay. Generate. Okay. So now if you look at it, there's a, there's a solid and there's a surface inside. I don't want this surface, right? So there's a middle surface that comes in and I don't want the surface. So I'm going to delete this surface, right? Or suppress the body, right? I don't need the surface there, okay? So now let me close design modeler again and go back to editing my geometry in space clip. Right? You could have initially started with SOLIDWORKS and you could have done all the operations we are doing in space claim at the start and then come back to it. But I'm going to do it in two steps here, just because I just want to open space claim again and again and show that you can go back and forth and still all the information is saved. So it says starting space claim, as you saw, let's give it a minute or two. Okay, so now we have it in space claim. I'm going to go to repair, repair, and there's some call option called merge faces. So now if I go back, if I zoom in, zoom in my model, right, I can see all these small faces. What I want to do is to start with, I want to merge them. Okay, so let's try to 
move it a little bit and zoom it better. Okay. So to start with, I'm going to merge some merge these faces. Okay. So let me say merge faces, select the faces. I'm going to do a box select again. Okay, so I'm going to just rotate it around. So that again, at the top portion, there's some small faces. I'm going to do the same thing, select the faces. Much face. In the bottom, I left two surfaces there. I'm going to select both of them. If something went wrong, let me do undo. Let me select these two surfaces and merge. I like space claim a little bit nowadays because it has option of undo like a word document. And I'm going to again select these faces here. And most of it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to leave it at that point. If you can see now the airfoil has two surfaces, top surface and the bottom surface, right? So now there are two surfaces. Ideally, it would be in the middle. Uh, maybe when you're when you're doing, you can probably be careful so that you know it's somewhere in the middle, but need not necessarily be. So I have a top surface and I have a bottom surface in the airfoil, right? So okay, let's leave it at that again to go back and close our space claim. Okay, and I'm going to open it in. Do we need to do anything with design model? Probably not. I don't think so. Let's now open it in mesh. So I'm going to edit the mesh. If your geometry is clean, it doesn't have these small surfaces, you don't need to do it. But then if you're going to get any geometry from your internet, it is unlikely that you'll probably find a lot of STL files and then you will have to do this process. So if you don't clean up your geometry, you cannot do any kind of work. So cleaning up the geometry is very important, you know? So, okay, so now let's do the usual stuff. Let's wait for the project to load. Still, something is happening here. Okay, so we have a mesh. So, by default, there'll always already be something that's generated, I think. But okay, we'll look at it, we'll edit things that we had to do last time. I want them, and I'm already the unit is in millimeters, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to do go ahead and on the click on the mesh, right click, insert sizing like we did in the class. So I'm going to say geometry. I'm going to go here and instead of single select, I'm going to do a box select. Okay. And I'm going to change it as edges. Okay. So now let me zoom it in. And I'm going to select all the edges. So you can see that they, all the edges have been green now, which means all of them have been selected and apply. So selected all edges, but as you can see, if you zoom in, this is some of the problem that everybody complains. So there are bigger elements and there are smaller elements, right? So by default, uh, we want to change our element size so that it's reasonable in there. So if you give a number of divisions, let's say 10 divisions, right? Now what's going to happen in some of these smaller faces that you had is also going to create 10 divisions. So you can't use the number of divisions. You can use, Element size, for example, let's say we use element size of let's say 
to mm okay so now you need to be you need to think carefully here what what should be a relevant size so now you can see that there's a very reasonable distribution of size and uh, yeah and a couple of other things that we had to do before we did this was we needed to select the inlet and outlet conditions boundaries right so okay so for now we have done that so let's leave it here and then we can say insert named sorry so let's go to face select mode single mode select the face create name distance named selection right so we call that an inlet okay similarly you can create the outlet and similarly the aerofoil i'm not going to do that for you now but you can do these things i'm just going to show you the meshing right and now we can also create a face insert sizing so let's say we select a face again we do the box select because you can also do the single select right so now you can see that you've selected the faces here apply again you can give an element size here maybe two right and let's say generate the mesh of course we still need to add the other things like uh, that we have not done now but we did it in a lab like uh, wake region and so on but these are things that you could be you could easily add in there but for now i'm just going to leave it as is you can i should also add the inflation layers so for example let's say we need to add the inflation layers which we have not done here insert inflation right the geometry yes single select apply boundaries right so i created the inflation layer i would say i can leave it as smooth transition and maximum layers maybe i can say six layers right i can give a smooth transition like i can give other options that we already explored in the lab as well i can go mesh and just generate it so now if we zoom back into our mesh Now, is this a good mesh? I'm, I, I do not know. But what we do know is, if you can see, there's a reasonable reasonable meshing in there. So now if you look at the quality of our mesh, are there check mesh quality? Yes, errors. Are there errors in there? Errors and warnings, right? So, and then element size, export sizing, and statistics, right? That gives us some information about these things. And let's say go back and say generate mesh. Yeah, so it says some of the elements on the problematic bodies can't meet the specified target metrics. That is because my mesh is reasonably coarse here. If you look at it, if you look at the metrics, I have about 7,000 elements only. So now you want to decrease the size of these elements so that you are able to capture things much better. So since the number of elements and number of nodes are very less, we are not able to get the geometry exactly, but you can see that we are able to still construct a reasonable geometry. I'm not saying there's a good geometry to work with, but you want to have much more, much smaller sizing in order to reduce, let's say, let's go back here and we say it is 0.1, for example, it's sizing, face sizing again, like let's say point four maybe and let's try to regenerate our mesh this could take a while to generate the mesh 
but you want to refine your mesh and only way to know if your mesh is good. So if you send me a message saying that is my mesh good, I can't really comment. Only way to know if your mesh is good is by doing a mesh convergence. Okay. Then I hope this is helpful for you to get started with your coursework. Have a I hope you enjoy doing the coursework. Bye.